Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics with a fun DIY tutorial. Hey, recently I filmed a video on how to actually make the bowl cozy. These are the smaller bowl cozies. These were so popular that uh, the Gypsy Quilter decided to make the large bowl cozy pre-cut batting as well. So now we not only have the small, but also for the large, and that's what you're seeing here. The batting kit has eight pieces with each large bowl cozy requiring two pieces so that one package will make a total of four of the large bowl cozies. The ones that you're seeing here were made from Liberty Lane. The bowl cozies here were made from Stars and Stripe. And I think it's really fun actually to have a coordinated look. So maybe using them in combination would be a really nice idea. So let's just jump into how easy and fun it is. You do not need to be an experienced quilter or even very experienced with a sewing machine to be able to easily make these. So having the batting pre-cut for you, I love that. It's already just ready to go. And this works beautifully with fat quarters. So I just took my fat quarter, cut that down to 15 inches square and place a piece of batting straight on top of the wrong side of that piece of fabric. I'll take my two and a half inch creative grid ruler along with my friction pen and I'm just going to draw some lines. And the whole idea here is I'm just drawing some quilting lines. If you're comfortable with free motion quilting, do whatever you want here. Whatever that is, we just need to attach the batting to the fabric. And I'm not very good at free motion quilting. So I just drew some straight lines and let my ruler be my help with getting a nice consistent interval of once I have my line established, I just move over by the width of my ruler and I draw that line again and continue left and right and then turn to the diagonal. Now we've done that ahead of time here so you can see what that looks like. But notice how these notches are cut out. So I wanna point out something to you real quick about what we're seeing here. Here, you can see I've got my notches as well as this. I recommend that you go ahead and just cut those out and get that kind of out of your way. And I also recommend that before you stitch these columns, use your smaller patchwork pins to pin very frequently in kind of these different squares, staying out of your sewing line. So you repeat that process two times. And I think it's fun to have two different fabrics, of course, for your bowl cozy, which also makes it reversible. You could have really two different looks. Once you have that done, you'll bring the uh, bowl cozy with the right sides together. And we're going to sew each one of those kind of darts, I'll call them, with a quarter inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and just go to our machine and we'll sew these two sides. And then we can go sew the opposite two sides. Okay, and you'll repeat that same step, those same steps with your second fabric and your second piece of batting. And I have found that it's helpful because these will be nested together that we press those darts open, at least the, the first opening portion. Here's what I'm talking about. Let's get our pressing mat and our iron. If you just press even the first oh, inch or so, that will really help that lie just a little bit flatter right there in those intersections. So now we have our first uh, bowl and we have our second one. We'll place the right sides together and make sure you're pinning right there those pleats. And you can see why now having those seams pressed open helps and not press to one side or the other. It's just too much bulk. There's a lot of bulk going on anyway and having that evenly distributed is helpful. Now I'm gonna switch from my patchwork pins, I used those before to pin everything together. These are a longer clover pin. These are the fine pins, they're about one and seven eighths. I like that they're going through the girth of the fabric as well as the batting. 
And I tried to use my smaller patchwork pins and I was finding that I was bending them. So I'm really finding a lot of use for these longer, heavier gauge pins whenever I'm involved with Quilt As You Go projects or things like this that involve batting being involved in the project. So we'll print here and then pin as you feel you need to in the other parts of your project. I'll keep pinning and then I'll meet you over at the sewing machine and we will sew a quarter of an inch. Now, of course, we need to leave an opening. I'd like to recommend that you go ahead and let's mark a reasonable opening. I'd never want to leave, have an opening be in, in where that V is. We want to be away from that, but not completely around a corner. That's a little bit harder to close an opening. So if we have an, our opening be right about in this range, we'll, I'll start here and finish here. Be sure to backstitch in both locations, and then we'll go ahead and turn our project through. But let me go ahead and get that pinned, and I'll see you over at the sewing machine. I can't wait to turn this right side out and see what we have. Let's see here. Oh, that, those are pretty important. I have some other pins here. I think we've got them all. All right, let's find that opening. And we will turn that through. What a great fabric collection. We've done a lot of projects with Liberty Lane. Some of our most popular patriotic projects, in fact, that customers really loved. Um, we've done that, so perhaps if you have bought some of those kits already and you really want to have a more coordinated look, this might be fun to grab some of the fat quarters that are left, some of the fabrics that are left, and maybe make some coordinating um, large bowl cozies and maybe even some of the smaller ones as well for a really coordinated look. Now, if you've left a big enough opening that you're able to get your hand in there, you could certainly be getting those out. Or if you haven't, this is my, this is like my best friend. Anytime I'm trying to per turn either something out that's got a point or in this case, this nice, beautiful arc, that's this point-to-point -point turner from Clover, where you're able to get in there and it can do the job that maybe you can't reach. And definitely for the smaller bowl cozies, I could not get my hand in there, of course. And I was using this tool extensively. So depending on the size of the opening that you have for this particular project, you might be able to do most of the work with your hands um, and not even need a tool. But in this case, I left a fairly a narrow opening. Now, one thing that some people like to do sometimes in that kind of saddle, you could even maybe clip, you could um, do some V's in there, reduce some bulk by cutting some of the batting out. That's some ideas that you might want to consider as well. One thing I like to do when I get ready to close an opening is I like to pre-press the quarter inch seam allowance. It seems to help me out just a little bit and I'm fighting the project less when I have the help of having a quarter inch pressed in. So let's do that real quick. And to hold that opening um, close, I love to use my Wonder Clips. Let me make sure I feel like I'm good and smooth there. I'm gonna smooth that out just a little bit. We are going to be using these bowl cozies and so I want to make sure everything's good and smooth because of course, once you've closed that opening, you're not getting back to that. You might even wanna consider pressing these out. If that's, if you're of concerned about that, wanna kind of roll back inward. You want to have that nice and smooth because you will be coming back with a top stitch, an eighth inch top stitch. For that reason, you might want to consider a heavier needle, maybe even a jean needle or a denim needle in your machine. Once you have that 
opening kind of tucked in, that's where the wonder clips really come into play. I love that they have a bigger footprint to help keep the open, opening closed because as we know with needles, that's a very narrow amount that it can hold, right? But the wonder clip has more than a quarter inch of surface area to help keep that closed. And for that reason, having a variety of different gauges of pins from the extra fine to the fine to the wonder clips, really they all work in concert because they each have a different job at a different time. So those are things if you don't have them in your sewing room, you might want to consider adding. Now that we have this here, we're now going to come back, as I mentioned, with a top stitch. Now this is where the thread will show. Everything we've done so far, the thread is inside, but this is now where the thread will be showing. So in this instance, on this bowl cozy, we just did cream on the top and the bottom, or we could have done a navy on this side and a cream on that side. So if that's important to you, this is the time to take that into consideration. I think knowing that I've got navy in the top and a cream in the bobbin, so I think what I'll do is actually sew from this side. So let's go sew our eighth inch seam allowance and our bowl cozy will be complete. Oh, these are so fun. How cute is this? And we have a reversible bowl cozy. Today I might want my flags out. Maybe I want to have navy out the next day. I love that. And of course, you know, as we mentioned with any kind of, of bowl cozy, the whole idea is that if you have something hot coming out of the oven, you know, now it, it's hot for a while. It's a way to keep heat away from the surface, maybe on a table, not burn your hands, and of course keep the dish warm and how cute these are. So. We think they're really fun. They add to the ambiance of a room, and of course, they're actually practical too. So hey, if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do that too. Share the video with a friend, and I look forward to seeing you soon on another video from Shabby Fabrics.